Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of October 26, 2020. I get a lot of topics this week and a lot of really good ones, actually. Uh, the first one is the Mavic Mini 2 that has leaked, and we'll talk about what happened there, and uh, we'll give you some pictures, actually, that we took. Uh, we'll talk about the Department of Justice that has a report about drone violation. We'll talk about a couple that was fined $1,000 for filming in national parks, including flying with a drone. And then we'll talk about this, this very interesting article from Drone Life about Section 2209, 2209. And I'll talk about what it means and why you actually should care about this. And then lastly, there were two endurance records this week, and I'm going to talk about what happened and how long these drones actually flew out there. So let's get started. The first news this week is the Mavic Air 2 that has been leaked. And uh, we talked about this earlier this week because uh, there were a bunch of videos that showed up about this Mavic Air 2 potentially that somebody had bought at Best Buy and uh, was doing a review of it. And, it. and then the next day, another review showed up. And uh, so we decided that we were going to investigate. So we, like I said, we have a video. We actually found out that it is the Mavic Air 2 that was at Best Buy. Uh, Best Buy is actually fully aware of what's going on. We talked to them and uh, an employee told us that uh, they were very aware of the leak and that if somebody was actually to sell the drone now uh, to anyone before the release date that they were going to get fired on like on the spot. So they, they're really aware of what they did. But basically, uh, it looks like at least two of them get out there. I saw two videos of people unboxing the Mavic Air 2. And uh, the Best Buy told us, one of the employees told us that it would be released on November 4th. So I don't know if that information is 100% correct, but that's what we were told. Uh, we were able to snap two photos of the box. We actually had the box in our hands and uh, and, and then about to check out. And then they wouldn't let us check out uh, because the, it wasn't in the system yet. It wasn't to be released. So... Um, we some of the specs that came out from this uh, OcuSync 2.0, which is the same as what we found on the Mavic Air 2, which is the same as what you have on the Mavic 2 series and on the Phantom 4 Pro V2. So that actually extends the the connection to about six miles of transmission, which is which is pretty long. But again, remember visual line of sight in the U.S. Um, but also what it does is it brings the possibility of having access to the smart controller. So with the smart controller, uh, with OcuSync 2.0 comes the smart controller. So if you you could potentially control the Mavic Air 2 using the Mavic Mini 2, I should say, the Mavic Mini 2 using the smart controller, just like we saw with the Mavic Air 2 recently. Uh, they're advertising 31 minutes of flight time. The, the flight time on the original Mavic was also really good, Mavic Mini. So uh, I'm expecting about the same sub 250 grams as well, like we had on the original Mivi, uh, Mini. And then the camera, 4K, this is new. We had 2.7K on the old one, 30 frames per second, uh, using a one over 2 2.3 inch CMOS sensor, which is fairly small. That's your uh, cell phone camera, 12 megapixels. So I don't expect anything amazing from the video quality. I mean, this is a small drone. This is a cheap drone. Uh, we couldn't really get a price actually on the bundle. Uh, so we'll, we'll find out more information when that comes out. But, um, but for as a starter drone, this, this is a, a great little machine. It looks like they were able to um, get better wind resistance. I know this was one of the complaints uh, from uh, previous users in the Mavic Air, or the Mavic Mini. I always get them confused. The Mavic Mini, the original one. Uh, so we'll see what happens. When we get our hands on it, we'll be able to fly it and then give you more information uh, as we always do with new drones. The next thing I want to talk about is a report from the Department of Justice that came out uh, and they collected data at a bunch of different key events in the country. And uh, this was done between September of 2019 and September of 2020, so over a one year period. And they went to the Super Bowl in Miami and, and we reported on the Super Bowl in Miami and we reported that there were violations that somebody had got caught uh, flying in the TFR for the Super Bowl. They were there at the, the World Series, the Rose Bowl game. Uh, they, they basically hit all the, the big events. And, uh, and the FBI reported that there were over 200 drones that were flying in the restricted area during that time. Now, what I found interesting is that they said that they confiscated a dozen drones. Okay, a dozen drones with 200 drones that were flying out there. So what this tells me is that the technology is not there yet to catch people that are flying in, in, uh, in TFR, temporary flight restrictions, especially at these large events. So um, I think that the, the data is very timely for a very specific reason, as we are about to get our regulation for remote ID, there's more and more information that comes out that's gonna say, see, 
told you we need remote ID because of what's going on. So, um, so you can see the report down here. I'm going to put, put a link and kind of show you uh, more information if you want. The next topic is a couple, uh, the, their travel bloggers, Kara and Nate, and they were fined $1,000 for filming in national parks without a permit. Now, you may or may not know this, but if you are a commercial entity, which they are because they have a, uh, a commercial blog, a blog for profit, then if you're gonna be filming, it doesn't matter if you're filming with a drone or filming on the ground, if you're gonna be filming in national parks, then you need to acquire a permit. And in this case, it looks like they did not get the permit so they were fined a thousand dollars for doing that and then turns out that they were also flying their drones inside of the national park which as we know is is a no-no um, so the FAA actually gave them a warning for using the drone in national park uh, somebody saw the video and reported it to the national park service and to the FAA and uh, the FAA warned them and told them that for commercial purposes they need to have a part 107 uh, remote pilot certificate so uh, this um, this is kind of, this is not something new, by the way, the, the, the park service will find you actually if they, they catch you in the act of flying your drone in the national park, they will give you a fine and, um, and then probably report you to the FAA as well. So uh, you can see the link down here for the, the total description, but uh, this is what happened. Okay, the next topic. This is kind of a serious topic and this is something that I, uh, that I wanted to bring up because I think it's really interesting. Uh, back in 2016, back in 2016, there was a, uh, an act that was put on by Congress. And Congress, if you know, or if you don't know, Congress mandates the FAA to create regulation through an act. And this is how we get, uh, this is how we get part 107. This is how we get the regulation for hobbyists, uh, section 349 that came out for hobbyists. Now in this 2016 act, uh, they basically have section 2209. And I'm sure you don't know about section 2209. I didn't uh, until I read the article, but it's, uh, it's part of, it's called the FAA Extension Safety and Security Act of 2016. And basically what Section 229 uh, highlights is a process to allow state governments to apply for airspace restriction. And there's a group out there that is, or several uh, drone advocates or industry advocates that are pushing the FAA to come up with regulation under Section 2209. Now, this was supposed to be implemented within six months of uh, Congress mandating the FAA to do this uh, back in 2016. And we don't even have an NPRM yet, and it's not expected to happen until 2021. So this regulation is, is not there yet, but this group is pushing the FAA to come up with regulation. And you might think in the back of your head, you might think, why are we in a hurry to put more airspace restrictions in place? And that's kind of what I said myself. But if you read through the article, it basically explains that the idea is that the process that is put in place under section 2209 would be based on risk management, risk, as risk assessment and risk management and put the burden on the FAA to create this airspace restriction around uh, special areas of interest. Instead, what is happening at the moment is that federal, state, and local governments are doing this on their own without going through, more than likely, a risk-based approach that the FAA would require. So what we have instead is we have restriction that is kind of the wild, wild west at the moment, and everything that comes out of restrictions right now at the federal level, state level, or, or local level is way more, uh, is way broader than it would be with section 2209. So in other words, the industry is basically asking for standards at this stage rather than the wild, wild west. The intent of 2209 was to actually only create airspace restriction around critical structures. And what we have at the moment, you have a state like uh, Texas, for example, that has restriction over filming animal feed, uh, that has restrictions over uh, television stations, filming television stations. Actually, I don't know if that one is from Texas, but that was one of the example in the article, or flying over state government buildings. So what section 2209 would do is would refocus where these airspace restrictions would be allowed to be put in and that would be over critical structures which to me makes sense okay um, the, the 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 regulation I talked about this in the past the regulation that's several years old now in Texas is overly restrictive and for no real good reason and you can tell there was a lot of hobby uh, lobbyist work that was done uh, in this case by the well by the lobbies to get something to restrict filming of certain locations so um, these restrictions by the way they may be illegal they 
They may be completely unenforceable if they're challenged in court, but in the meantime, they're still uh, regular, they're still stopping commercial operation, legal commercial operation, and you can still get a ticket from it, and then you still have to spend a whole lot of money in court in order to uh, to go against it. So uh, I thought this was something that was really interesting that you should be uh, aware of and, uh, and what is going on with Section 2209. Let's finish with something cool. Endurance records. There were actually two different articles. One of them was sent by one of you guys, uh, one of our students. And um, the first one is really cool. It's a, a drone that's 150 foot wingspan, okay? 150 foot wingspan that flew for 72 hours. That was in England. And uh, the drone is called a FASA PHASA 35. It's solar powered and it provides real time data back to the ground station. And the reason why this is interesting is because they're trying to, and they're saying that this this drone could actually fly for up to a year at a time, okay, a one year flight in the stratosphere and basically provide data back to the ground. So it's almost like a, like a, like a satellite and uh, that would send data back to the ground station. So I thought that was really interesting. And the other one is from a European company called Cortanium Technologies that announced that they set a record for the longest flight for a hybrid drone, and that was 10 hours and 14 minutes. Now, this is not solar powered. Uh, hybrid technology is a combination of batteries and fuel. And uh, the, the technology is designed so that you have an easy way to refuel between flights, so you don't have to recharge the battery uh, right away and then get back up in the air. So. Uh, so two records, one was really long, but using solar power uh, and then recharging the drone. And then the other one was a hybrid technology. Okay, this is all I have for you this week. I hope you enjoy this one. As always, like, comment, uh, subscribe to the channel. We have way more videos coming up. And uh, obviously this video every single week on Friday. So I will see you guys next week.